those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are here to worship Almighty God, whose purposes are good, whose power sustains the world he has made, who loves us though we have failed in his service who gave Jesus Christ for the life of the world, who by his Holy Spirit leads us in his way. As we give thanks for his great works, we remember those who have lived and died in his service, in the service of others. We pray for all who suffer through war and are in need. We ask for his help and blessing that we may do his will and that we may acknowledge him as Lord and King. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his children. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. The Collect for Remembrance Sunday. O oh God, it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single peace. Let the design of your great love shine on the waste of our wraths and sorrows, and give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes and peace in our hearts. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Job, chapter 19. Have pity on me, have pity on me, O you, my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. Why do you, like God, pursue me, never satisfied with my flesh? Oh, that my words were written down, oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and with lead, they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 90. Satisfy us by your loving kindness, so shall we rejoice and be glad. Satisfy us by your loving kindness, so shall we rejoice and be glad. Lord, you have been our judge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land in the earth was born, from age to age you are God, you turn us back to the dust and say, Go back, O child of earth. Satisfy us by your loving kindness, so shall we rejoice and be glad. A thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it has passed, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream, we fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes, in the evening it is dried up and withered. Satisfy us by your loving kindness, so shall we rejoice and be glad. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. Satisfy us by your loving kindness. So shall we rejoice and be glad. Show your servants your works and your splendour to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands, prosper our handiwork. Satisfy us by your loving kindness, so shall we rejoice and be glad. And second reading. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and you, we will all be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
Gospel according to John. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. He thanks the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. Eternal Father, strong to save, may we each know in our hearts that security, that safety that comes from resting in your everlasting arms. Amen. <clears throat> on this sombre day, we reflect on the horrific waste of life through war and offer our thanks to those who gave their lives so that we can live in freedom. Our own war memorial in church over in the corner uh, together with uh, the town memorial in Hermitage Park and countless others uh, around our nation along with those throughout the Commonwealth and the wider world list those who made that sacrifice. 
And especially poignant for many is the fact that there is no known grave, whether infantry lost in the mud of the Somme or those who perished at sea as ships blew up or slid beneath the waves, or airmen who perished over the sea. And today we offer our thanks for all who died in the service of their country and pray for those who carry on living with physical or mental scars and for families affected by the loss in war. Our Bible readings today have a suitably solemn theme but shot through with wonder at the glory awaiting those who believe. As world history grinds on with more suffering uh, and we can sometimes lose hope, especially uh, against the backdrop of continuing uncertainty and fear uh, with this global pandemic. So as we look at our Bible readings for today, may our thoughts this morning help us to see uh, the higher perspective as we shift our gaze from earth to heaven. Job's inner turmoil is brought to our attention in the verses Jeanette read to us just now. He is initially full of self-pity as he calls on his friends to show sympathy for his suffering. Uh, not only are they uh, making that suffering worse, but he sees God as the author, someone who's pursuing him. And yet, uh, partway through that reading, there is that sudden about turn when he launches into praise and certainty about his Redeemer. And despite his suffering, Job knows that his Redeemer lives, that one day all things will be brought to completion when he stands upon the earth. Job understands that this mortal body will decay, but will be resurrected, and that one day he would be with God and behold him. And Psalm 90 speaks of that stability that underlines our belief in God from generation to generation, from everlasting to everlasting, from before the mountains were formed, God has been there and is constantly faithful. Again, the mortality of our human bodies is mentioned as we are turned back into dust, but with the understanding that time scales in God's eyes are different to us. Slumber in death while we await bodily resurrection is seen against a thousand years being like a day. And the second part of those verses we used from Psalm 90 are like a prayer uh, as we question how long we must wait, asking for compassion and an assurance of God's steadfast lo love. And we ask that God's power and favour might be manifest, that the works of our hands might prosper. Ordinary life goes on with all the tragedies about us, uh, but with our eyes looking upwards for the day when Jesus will return. And this is the message that emerges in the familiar words of our reading from 1 Corinthians 15, uh, often read at funerals. Uh, the mystery Paul unfolds is that we can't experience heaven in these rapidly wearing out human bodies of ours. He tells us the perishable cannot inherit the imperishable. Uh, we need to exchange the limitations and frailty of these bodies for ones suitable for eternity. Depending on when the second coming occurs, some Christians may have been asleep for a considerable time, while those alive at the time will be in no doubt that something momentous is taking place. As Paul writes, the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Now, this event will mark the point when death is finally swallowed up in victory. And this is the hope in the heart of every Christian and not a vague 
wishy-washy optimism that things might turn out all right, but an absolute certainty guaranteed by God himself. And that assurance is repeated in our Gospel reading from John chapter 6. Going back to the beginning of that chapter, Jesus uh, has been pursued by a hungry crowd. Uh, they're intrigued by what he has to say, uh, but it's their physical hunger that drives them uh, to look for him. Uh, and we can only speculate about how uh, poor people suffering from uncertain harvests or the restrictions under which they lived uh, in Roman occupied territory, what type of privations they might have suffered. And that vast crowd has gathered and we're told that Jesus miraculously multiplied the five loaves and two fish uh, into enough for everybody with those 12 baskets left over. And that miracle uh, to the crowd was proof enough uh, to the people that Jesus was the prophet who they wanted, and it tells us they wanted to compel him uh, to become their king. But of course this was purely a temporal kingdom they had in mind, uh, where food would be plentiful and uh, where Jesus would bring about justice and turn out the occupying Roman troops. And it's clear that Jesus was aghast at this turn of events and that he'd withdrawn to the mountain to pray privately. And then during the following night, the disciples had been rowing across the lake when they saw Jesus walking towards them. And he joins them in the boat. Meanwhile, the crowd has walked around the shore of the lake and the next day marvel at how Jesus could arrive in the boat when uh, he hadn't left with the disciples the previous evening. And this again prompts Jesus uh, to retort to the crowd that really all they were interested in was uh, the novelty of, uh, of how he'd arrived and, uh, and that pursuit of the free food. And Jesus goes on to explain the nature of the food that he has really come to offer, which is the bread of life. And this is the bread from heaven that satisfies the hunger of the soul for eternity. And this is all a sort of preamble to our very short reading where Jesus is speaking uh, of all those given into his care who are satisfied with the bread of life and destined to be raised up on the last day. And then there's that wonderful promise that no one who comes to Jesus will be cast out and all have the promise of being with Jesus in eternity. And we see Jesus' absolute obedience to do his Father's will, not to stray off course, to follow the agenda of the crowds who wanted an earthly king and a provider of food. Jesus' mission was to come to enable everyone of all subsequent generations to receive bread from heaven, eternal life for all who entrust their lives to him. We started by thinking of the sadness of loss and the evidence of humankind's sin in causing so much suffering through war. We've seen the futility of human effort alone in the life of Job and his recognition that he needed a different perspective. And this speaks of the wider need for humankind carrying on life in its own sinful and meaningless way uh, with all the suffering caused by war and injustice to reappraise our existence. And it also resonates with present conditions in this country where many are surviving on limited benefits as jobs are lost and so many face an uncertain future. When Job re-engaged his eyes toward heaven, he recognised that his Redeemer was indeed alive and he would one day see God. This is what the world needs today to realise. In many instances, it's working against God's purposes, not with him. And for the Christian, Job's hope 
for eternity is repeated in those promises Paul makes, those assurances from God, as we await the sound of the trumpet heralding the return of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So may we all find our hope in Christ, the giver of the bread from heaven who offers eternal life to all who believe and will not let those perish who are given to him. Jesus says this is the will of God that we should be held safe until the day when we are raised up on the last day. This is the hope, uh, particularly on a day like Remembrance Sunday, when uh, the church needs to proclaim that good news, that message of hope, to speak with a clear and certain voice that there is something better to come if we place our faith in God. Amen. If you're able, will you please stand and bow round to face our memorial. In our pre-COVID days, we were of course open seven days a week, that's always hugely important to me. Uh, we are in every sense an open and inclusive church and that anybody can come into this church at any time during daylight hours. Often not people come in to look at our stained glass. It's said that we have some of the finest stained glass in Scotland. I've been around Lindsay when we've done little tours around the church to look at the stained glass. But another remarkable fact about this church, I think, is uh, are our plaques on the wall telling stories of amazing people, really, most of whom were military, um, primarily army, famous Scottish regiments, and also the Indian Army and of course some from the Navy uh, and the Air Force. In the last 50 years or so, the, the, the Navy has become particularly dominant, um, and, and even more so now as all submarines move up from the south to be based at uh, Fast Lane. So we have very strong links with the, mili with the military, um, always have had, and never more so more than now, and we cherish those links. And as we did on Trafalgar Day last month, uh, we particularly dedicated our Eucharist uh, to the Royal Navy. I'm going to read out these names from our memorial, as I do each year. But there are many other names, for example, up here on my right. And as you go round our church, uh, men and some women uh, who have given their lives uh, in conflict, and those, of course, after the Second World War, as Kevin reminded us at the start of his sermon. So from the First World War, G. H. Digby Watson, Christopher T. D. Hughes, David Robertson, Ralph G. C. Robb, Hedley R. Lyle, Alfred A. D. Rayburn, Fred Stone, Harold F. Duncan, John B. Taylor, James Thompson, Michael McKechnie, Archibald R. McKechnie, Con Sharkey, George E. Thompson, James Sutherland, the Second World War, James Aitken, John Brown, Douglas J. Crombie, James Cruickshank, Ian Gordon Farker, Kenneth Johnson, John Bramall Kerr, David MacDonald, 
William S. MacPhail, Duncan McShane, and Frederick O. McWilliam. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Have two minutes silence. ever-living God. Remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now Richard, former submariner, will lead us in our intercessions. Let us pray. Loving God, we recognise our responsibility to encourage and uphold one another and to live together in peace and love. We also recognise our needs and our human weaknesses and come to you now with our prayers and petitions. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Holy God, we pray for our church leaders that they may be guided in their ministry by the influence of the Holy Spirit and that the church, in the power of the Spirit, may make the gospel understandable to people of every race, language and culture. That the Holy Spirit of peace may unite and reconcile the peoples and nations of the earth, bringing to an end war, hatred and discrimination.
Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. Creator God, we pray for your world, of which your Son is King. We pray for peace, reconciliation and healing in the places of war, hatred and terrorism. We pray that the nations of this world may be united and subject to the rule of Christ the King, through whom and for whom all things were created. We pray for earthly monarchs, especially our gracious sovereign, Queen Elizabeth. May they rule, be, may their rules be guided and influenced by the example set by your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Mighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women who serve in the Navy, Army or Air Force, at home and abroad. Defend all who face danger and put their lives at risk so that others might live in safety and give them the courage to face the perils of active service. Comfort all worried families whose loved ones are in danger. Surround them with your love. Protect them from all harm and help them to know that nothing can separate them from your love. At the start of another period of lockdown in England and the continuation of the tier regulations in Scotland, we pray for all our friends and families and ask for your blessing and protection for them as they try to carry on with some sort of normal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for medics and chaplains on all who support the suffering. Give them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience to minister to the sick and wounded and to all prisoners and captives. We especially pray for all who return from the field of combat with injuries both physical and mental which have ruined their young lives and for the charities and organisations which support them in their convalescence. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for those fallen in battle who gave their lives in the cause of freedom and in defence of peace and justice. We remember, too, all civilians and non-combatants who died in the fighting. Surround all who are bereaved with compassion and give them a patient faith in their suffering. At this time, we pray for the souls of Raymond Guy, Billy and Nicole and Gordon Tuck, who have recently died. May they rest in peace and and rise rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. Everlasting God, wash away the wounds of war, violence and hatred. Help us to recognise how blessed Jesus named the peacemakers and to know that if we really wish for a peaceful world, we should honestly pray, let it begin with me. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. We meet in Christ's name.
Bless you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become the cup of our salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. The worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You create the heavens and establish the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ your Son, our life and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us, that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit, you call us to new birth, in a creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our praise, with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, saying the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for the gift of your Son, born in human flesh. He is the word existing beyond time, both source and final purpose, bring to wholeness all that is made. Obedient to your will, he died upon the cross. By your power you raised him from the dead. He broke the bonds of evil and set your people free to be his body in the world. On the night when he was given up to death, knowing that his hour had come, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. It is broken for you. And after supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is put out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that, overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptised into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage, the <coughs> company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. Living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in the Son. Rejoice in God's new creation. Let us pray as our Redeemer has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Do not bring us the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us. the gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Thank you. 